How do you do that in flipping science? We're looking at carbohydrates. Oh, oh, oh sugar. Pour the sugar on, baby. I'm gonna make your life so sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pour a little sugar on it. Oh, yeah. Pour a little sugar on it, honey. So, science understands we're gonna look at. Um, carbohydrates are naturally occurring sugars in their polymers. They're polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones or substances that make them in hydrolysis. Um, give the structural form and determine whether something is a carbohydrate. Disaccharides and polysaccharides are produced by the condensation of monosaccharides. So right, the molecular formula for glucose and for disaccharides and polysaccharides are based on glucose. Uh, draw monosaccharides, given the structural form of a disaccharide, and identify the repeating units. Um, in aqueous solution, there's an equilibrium between the ring and chain form of glucose. And then this one will pop up a few times looking at condensation reactions. Uh, when you have uh, two organic molecules reacting, you get a small molecule coming out, usually water, that's called a condensation reaction. So carbohydrates are a very important energy source. They're the main energy source for most animals. So when your body's breaking down substances for energy, usually it's breaking down carbohydrates first, then when the carbohydrates run low, it turns to fats, and then after fats, it turns to proteins. So what are carbohydrates? So carbohydrates are naturally occurring sugars and their polymers. Now they may have the general formula of C6H2YOY, but this isn't what makes them, uh, this isn't what defines them. Um, we'll have a look at examples where this is the case, but there are also examples where they aren't. So some examples of some common carbohydrates are glucose, which is like I said before, the main unit of uh, sugar that your body runs on. Sucrase is what's behind here. This is table sugar. Table su sugar is made up of sucrose and a fructose molecule joined together. The key definition of carbohydrates that we're going to use are polyhydroxyaldehydes or polyhydroxyketones or substances that produce these on hydrolysis. So this is the definition that you need to remember. And let's have a look at where that comes from. So here we have a substance that has an aldehyde group at the end, so C double bond OH, that makes it an aldehyde, and it's polyhydroxy because there's lots of these OH groups. An OH group is called a hydroxy group, a hydroxyl group. So this is a polyhydroxy aldehyde. This one here has a ketone group, so there's a C double bond O in the middle of the chain, but it's also got hydroxyl groups around it too, so one, two, three hydroxyl groups. So it's got more than one, so that makes it polyhydroxyl because there's hydroxyl. Uh, groups and ketones, so it's polyhydroxy ketone. Carbohydrates can be classified as mono, di, or polysaccharide. The monosaccharide has one ring of sugar, and disaccharide has two rings of sugar, and polysaccharides have more than two rings of sugar. So here are some of the examples we talked about. Here's glucose, here's sucrose, and this one here, that could be starch, it could be um, glycogen, it could be cellulose. It's lots of glucoses joined together, but each of those is different because of where the glucose units join to each other. But it's definitely one of those three. So let's look at molecular formulas. If something's a monosaccharide, generally, but not always, it has a formula C6H12O6. If you join two of those monosaccharides together, you get a disaccharide, and disaccharides usually have the formula C12H22O11. When you join two monosaccharides together, like for example here we're joining two glucoses together, um, you get a water molecule coming out as they join, and that's why this is a condensation reaction. In condensation reactions you get um, small molecules emitted when you have two organic components reacting to e with each other. So in this case our two glucoses, when they join together, there's an H here and an OH here. Now it's from one or the other. Uh, two H's and an O break off, and we join together those two uh, glucose rings. In this case, we're making maltose. Three, two, one. So let's talk about polysaccharides. This is starch. So starch has lots and lots of these glucose repeating units joined together at a particular carbon. So starch is a good example of polysaccharide. It's an energy-containing molecule that's found in lots of uh, vegetables and fruits. So it's made up of lots of glucoses joined together. Now, its uh, chemical formula is C6H10O5 to the N, where N is the number of glucose repeating units that you have. Um, N can be hundreds or it can be thousands of units long. So this is the chemical formula for a polysaccharide that we use because it sums up what's happening. You have lots of these units here where you've lost um, two H's and an O, and they've joined together, and that's how you get your, your units joining together to make up the polysaccharide. So how do you make a polysaccharide? Well, you start with, uh, in this case, we're starting with a disaccharide, and to that we're adding a monosaccharide. So then we make a trisaccharide. 
to that trisaccharide, you add another monosaccharide, and you get a tetrasaccharide, and then you keep on going and going and going until you've got your polysaccharide. Key thing is, every single time you do this, you add a water molecule. Now, you can go backwards as well. Going backwards is called hydrolysis, because you're putting in water in this case to cause lysing. Lysing means breaking up. So hydrolysis. So we can go back the other way. So every time uh, we break a, uh, a glucose ring off of a polysaccharide, we need to put a water molecule in to do that. Now, something interesting about glucose is when you put it in solution, it exists in two forms. There's a chain form, which is over here, and a ring form, which is over here. In solution, generally, the majority of the molecules are sitting as the ring form, but a certain number are existing as the chain form. So these are found in equilibrium in solution. So when in solution, you have this aldehyde um, group that's forming at the end of some of the glucose molecules. And what that means is um, some of those glucose molecules react, the ones that have the aldehyde group present, will react as an aldehyde. That means they'll react with Tollens reagent, for an example. So some recipes for showing off the Tollens reaction use glucose as the uh, substance, the aldehyde that's being um, oxidized. Um, that means the aldehyde group can be oxidized by other things as well, but um, glucose definitely reacts with um, Tollens reagent. So let's have a look at some questions. So this question says, dihydroxyacetone is a simple carbohydrate. The structural formula is shown below. Explain why di dihydroxyacetone is a carbohydrate. So to be a carbohydrate, a substance needs to be a polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone, or a substance that produces a polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone on hydrolysis. So in this case, it is. We have a ketone group here. So we've got a carbon chain. We've got a ketone group in the middle, so that's check. Then we have two hydroxyl groups here, so that's more than one, so that makes it poly, so this is a polyhydroxy um, ketone, and that's why it's a carbohydrate. So the next question says, the carbohydrate sucrose is extracted from cane sugar. The structural formula is shown below. State the molecular formula of sucrose. So we can do some counting now. So I'm going to start with C. How many carbons have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, so it's 12. Now we need to figure out how many hydrogens we have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. C12, H22. O, how many oxygens have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Or 11. And as we saw before, that is the general formula that you get, usually for most disaccharides. Then it says, state whether Sucrose is mono, di, or polysaccharide. There's two rings of carbohydrate there joined together, so that makes it a disaccharide. So the last question says, cotton is composed of the carbohydrate cellulose. The structural formula of cellulose is shown below. In nature, cellulose can be hydrolyzed to form glucose. Write an equation for this hydrolysis. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bracket the repeating unit of the cellulose. Okay. And now I'm going to write the formula of that so I know what I'm repeating. Now we saw this before, it should be C6H12, 3C6H10O5. Well, let's figure it out and make sure that's right. So I'm going to draw in carbons at each of the vertices that doesn't have anything there. So I'm going to start with C. How many have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So C6, how many H's have I got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So C6H10O, how many O's? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, O, 5. Now, we're going to bracket that and put an N there. The N is representing the number of those units that are joined together. Now, if we're going to hydrolyze this, we need to add in water molecules. So we're going to add in water. Now, the important thing is we're going to add in N water molecules. Every time we break uh, one of these units away from another one, we need to put in a, water, uh, we need to put in a uh, water molecule to do that. That's why it's hydrolysis, because it's hydrolysis, we're using water. And that goes to, I'm going to get N, C6H12O6. So we need to put in N water molecules to break up N of these units that are joined together. And if we do that, we get N, C6H12O6 units, which is the uh, glucose that we have here. So today on Flippy Science, we looked at carbohydrates. That's it for science today. See ya.